This is the JFJ Conspiracy, where the shop talk is rough. I'm Jim. And I'm Frank. And I'm Jerry. And this is the JFJ Conspiracy Podcast, where the shop talk is rock. Episode 17. How are we doing, guys? Wonderful. Very good. Wonderful. Melting out here in the San Gabriel Valley. Yeah, Yeah. it's hot. It's a little warm today. Yeah. And we haven't hit summertime yet. (laughs) (laughs) Can't can't wait. I know it. I know it. Luckily, we have a new air conditioning unit for... So it's uh, pumping and working really good. Good. And um, I tell you what, a couple of years ago it went out and we had to buy oh. a new one. Yeah, we went through one of the hottest summers up here mm. and we, we sweltered. It was just ridiculous. So glad to have a nice new unit. As Aren't we would. all? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Sorry. So That's what's been going on? Unit. <laughs> I, I know you have something you wanted to uh, share, and it's um, Jerry. Uh, you have something you want to share, and I'll pull that back in a little bit. And, no, I don't. Uh, oh, oh, yes, oh, I do. Uh, shout out. You know, it, it's only been five minutes that we talked about it, so yeah, exactly. probably probably less. But you see how long it's been, guys. Yeah, <laughs> don't talk to me about that in Jim's three minute or under song. Okay. I know. Yes. But seriously, folks in conspiracy land, shout out to Marianne V. She's our friend from school, Facebook, been around, you know, our friend forever. Um, blew out her Achilles tendon. Uh, and God bless her. You know, friends of ours from school are going over there cooking for her, cleaning for her. Uh, we're guys, so we don't do that. So, we think about it. We're give, Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought about it. We a could lot. do it. Yeah. Let me know when you get there, Jim. <laughs> okay. uh, so major shout out to Marianne V. She knows who she is. And we love you and speedy recovery. And Absolutely. God bless. And, and you know, um, I would love to say that it was, you know, she tore her Achilles while she was rescuing a kitten or something. But I wasn't going to say it, Frank, but go ahead. Yeah. yeah we're we're just getting older, Tell folks, and things happen. Things happen. <laughs> That's how it works. So, Marianne, Terrible. we're thinking about you. <laughs> Terrible things happen. Poor Marianne. <laughs> yeah. So, love it, love and miss you, Marianne. Yeah, Speedy recovery. Yes. Love you, Marianne. Yep. Okay. Well, guys, um, being that it's warmed up quite a bit, let's talk about something uh kind of cool us off a little bit shall we let's what? talk about what's in jim's fridge what is in jim's fridge Finally. come on jim share people have been asking for Are quite we a long find time out tonight today we'll find out what Finally is in jim's out. fridge today yeah. Yeah. you guys ready here let's we go we oh do. boy do it if I'm we need a drum roll it. we we need a drum roll for this <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking. So here we go. Yes. Kiss, Flaming Youth, God of Thunder, 7-inch, Picture Sleeve. Uh, nice. Oh, geez. This is with the uh, Desert label, not with the uh, original Bob Ezrin label, unfortunately, mm-hmm. which I guess did not come in a picture sleeve. And it was extremely rare then. because Jim. only a few made it out. I think alive, and then this one they released it with the picture sleeve. And yes, wow! So that's an iconic vinyl, picture, right? Right, oh. vinyl so cool you got to keep it in the fridge. Oh. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well done, Jim. Well, and that's a particular well done particular single that never goes bad because mm-hmm. uh, never goes is. bad. No, mm-hmm. it's a Flame good one. Youth. Uh, no, one of my doesn't. favorite songs on the album. Yep. All yep. right. Well, you know what? Always look forward to find out what's in Jim's fridge. That's yes. today. We'll see what happens next time. I like it, guys. I like where we're headed with this. There you go. Wow. Awesome, Jim. That's that's awesome. Yeah, I don't know if we've talked wow. about this before in the past or not, um, but I have a question for you guys. Mm-hmm. I went and saw Van Halen when they did their little reunion with David Lee Roth. They toured. I did too. Okay, and then they came around and they did uh, one more tour, I think, with him. Uh, after the reunion a few years ago in 2015, they did a tour. 
So they actually toured twice with, with him. I, I didn't know they did that twice. Yeah. I know I watched the one at the forum uh, with Cool and the gang. Yes, that was the first time yeah. they came around. Yeah. And then the second time was 2015, I want to say. Uh, uh, Cindy and I went up to uh, um, Glen Helen and, and saw him outdoors. And, mm-hmm. you know, say what you will. David Lee Roth is not a great singer, but what a showman. <laughs> what mm-hmm. what a oh, yeah. front man for a band. Diamond Dave. Now, Absolutely. This band obviously has turmoil. They can't get their act together. Um, but would you go see them now with David Lee Roth minus Michael Anthony if they came around again? Jim? Uh, uh, hard pass, I think. Okay. Uh, no, you give me a new album first and give me about two months to digest it, maybe. Absorb it, yeah. Yeah, um, I did love different kind of truth, and then I hear from you know experts and stuff that you know that's old material, but it sure held up. I mean, I really yeah. got into that album when it came out. Really yeah. did. All that music was done early Isn't on. That something? Yeah, Isn't that and, something. And Dave rewrote the yeah. lyrics and whatnot. I thought yeah. it was a fresh album. I enjoyed it. I loved it. Uh, yeah. You know, some people were, you know, panning it, saying it was lazy on their part or whatever. Uh, I no, enjoyed the that's album. That's a Van Halen I, I album, straight up. Yeah, that's a Van yeah. Halen album, straight I, up. Yep. I'd rather than play with Michael Anthony, but I don't think that's ever going to happen again. What's the deal there? Is it just... Uh, it's because when they broke up with Sammy, Michael went off. He wanted to play. The Van Halen brothers were too busy getting drunk, getting high, doing whatever what they were doing. Michael so wanted Michael to go Anthony be on the road. Is, yeah, exactly. So he showed his allegiance to uh, Sammy Hagar, and, uh, I don't, and they actually made... Never thought of that. Michael sign off his rights to the uh, to the songs and whatnot. A certain royalty, port, royalty yeah, wise, I don't know exactly which part it was that he had to sign off, uh, but he gave up his his portion of all ownership the songs in the were band. Always, by all of them, all, all, all the songs were always written by all four of them. Yeah. I remember that in the albums it had all four of their names on it. Yeah, written and performed by. And oh well, and and there's all, always been that. Uh, but I think Ed wrote all those tunes. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. Come on, guys. Yeah. But, I mean, <laughs> when, when I saw them live, I could have swore he I played, heard Michael he Anthony. Lead, he played lead guitar in all those tunes, Jim. Uh, well. No, I in an early interview, like maybe Van Halen 2, Van Halen 3, he said, he said, well, I write all the songs. He yeah. goes, everybody's name goes on them because that was a deal we worked mm, out in the beginning. Band, but yeah. Well, see, the way they record Eddie, is Eddie, Eddie comes in with the music. And then he get, they gave it to Dave, and he would go write lyrics to the music. Elton John, Bernie Toppin. Pretty okay. much, pretty much. Um, but uh, what I was saying, though, is I, when we did see them live, I could have swore I heard, heard uh, Michael Anthony's voice on the background vocals. And, and then I heard rumors that they were actually using triggers. Using, using his backing yeah. vocals. So why not pay the man? Because Absolutely. He's, I, he's a right. stellar vocalist. Yes, he is. So. Yeah, great singer. Mm, yeah, I don't yes. think I would go see them live again myself again, and uh, it, it's hard because I'm loyal to Dave. I, I'm, I'm, I've always loved his antics. Uh, mm-hmm. I like that he's a crazy old man at this point. Yeah, and he's entertaining. He's all and Sammy Hagar is leaps and bounds a better singer, but he is for me he's zero entertaining. I don't, I don't enjoy the circle. I didn't enjoy. <laughs> okay, um, I haven't heard none of that. Uh, so. Chicken foot. Um, I like Chicken two songs like off of Montrose. One and three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't like that. Uh, it's just no hooks. There's just something about it. His solo career is spotty at best. You know, it, it sells. Don't get me wrong, but never did anything for me. So, I think that's that story of Van Halen. In, unless, of course, they want to tour with Gary Sharon, then I'm in. But other than that, speaking you know. <laughs> of that, Frank, I, I hate to interrupt, but they're on YouTube. They have where they toured Australia with Gary Sharon, mm-hmm. and you could tell as you watch the video. Uh, Gary Sharon's trying to trying to lead mm-hmm. Edward, ain't and happening. Edward Edward has yeah ain't happening. And right. they go into uh, somebody uh, call me a doctor, and and Gary Sharon goes off. It's like they cut his mic, or I don't know what happened. And then Michael Anthony sings the whole song. Wow, had so, enough of him, I guess. Just, huh? just saying, you brought up Gary Sharon, and and I do love Van Halen three, on occasion if mm-hmm. I'm in that mood. Yeah, it's a great album. There's a few excellent tunes on that album but he, i thought it sounded more like an extreme album than than a van halen album because of the lyrics yeah okay now see you get you're more lyrical i just yeah. you know yeah i get the vibe and i like it yeah. so yeah gary sharon van halen live in australia 
I don't know Check what that year out. it was, 92, 93. It's on YouTube. I enjoy watching watch that. It. Yeah. Good stuff. Sorry. Interrupted. Well, so we'll go ahead and put a put a no thank you on Van Halen then. No. Yeah. no Give me a new album. You. Give me a new album first. Yeah, I just and, don't see uh, that one. One of those songs, if I never heard it again, hmm. I Can't Drive 55. Oh, oh Sammy. Gosh, man. <laughs> One foot on the brake and oh, one on the gas. Come yeah, on. I didn't didn't like it when it came out. I yeah. thought it was hokey. Oh, I loved it when it came out. There's too much traffic I can't pass. Jim, you're a sports yeah. car lover. Uh, I know. It's right up your I alley. Yeah. I loved that black Ferrari you drove in the video, but other than Ooh. that, uh, yeah. That's about as far no. as we went. Yeah, another no. another uh, performer who I think highly benefited from MTV because um, – I would agree there. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. One other quick note, real quickly, and then we'll move on. Did you guys know, and, and maybe I'm just ignorant and naive and, and chose not to know this, but That's did you know Don Kirshner's rock concert was done completely in the studio and they added the audience in in post-production? No, I did not know that to answer your question, but related to that is when you guys broke my heart and said UFO Live <laughs> and Kiss Alive had studio alterations to it. Yeah. <laughs> so if Don Kirshner's rock concert had things added to it, mm-hmm. okay. I, I couldn't stay up that I, late hardly ever. I, I remember seeing Rush on I'm it. not sure I'm not sure if it was Don Kirshner or Midnight Midnight or Midnight Special. Midnight special. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, and I saw a thing where the guys from Red Cross were talking about when they were kids, they went to taping of one of those shows. Mm-hmm. Probably and, nice uh, special. Ar- Ario, Ario Speedwagon happened to be on there, and they were they were the last band, and and they were splitting out, and they, people they were begging the audience to stay, and I think they were playing with like a Cool in the Gang or something. Wow. And after Cool in the Gang played, everybody <laughs> wanted to split out kind of thing, and and uh, they were begging them to stay, and they're like, eh, nah, eh. Let's stick around and watch Ario Speedwagon. <laughs> well, I happened to be watching a uh, special on Kansas. The band, and uh, I didn't know Don Kirshner was their producer at one point. He brought them in, and you know, they were pretty much introduced to him and, and put him on his show. And they were they were saying themselves, "Here we are playing live, quote unquote, in a studio to nobody. There's nobody in the auditorium." But they didn't tell them that's how it was going to be. And they added oh, wow. in the crowd after the facts. So they're trying to they're trying to act enthused like they're playing a live show with nobody there. And then hmm. they, they showed a shot of the, the fans sitting. And I want to go back and watch a bunch of those and see how many times they just use the same crowd. Same same folks. Because same person of, in front. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I did not know that. Wow. I was just a little bit let down. So Yeah. We were so young then, guys. Yeah. We we, we yeah. didn't catch that stuff. No. Not at all. Uh-uh. Look at all the people watching. Wow. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, well. All right. Well, let's move ahead and, and do some new music. How about that, guys? Sounds uh, groovy. Sounds great. Let's right. get on it. Hey, I've got a band from New York. They're called the Dam Busters. And um, they're out of Long Island. And they are older. Ki- they're not kids. They, they have been around. Um the, the guitarist's name is Jimmy Gumina. He's from uh, a band called Noisy Mama. Uh, Frankie Viano has played with uh, Quiet Riot and drummed with Widowmaker. He toured with Dee Schneider. Uh, oh. Vic Pullen is the bass player. Um, he's been with a bunch of different outfits. And they, they did an EP and they put out uh, Jimmy Kunis is the... Uh, vocalist. I've heard that name. I've and heard that name. He, he has played with Savoy Brown. He sang with Savoy Brown, Humble oh, wow. Pie Live, and Cactus. Mm-hmm. Okay. So these guys are veterans of the music world. They're they're out of New York, and uh, they've put together. If you like ACDC and you like old Led Zeppelin and T Rex and stuff like that, you're gonna like their music. And um, right now, and I happen I happen to like those bands. Uh, me too. Same here. Me too. Yep. And I'll put up their Facebook link on our uh, on our page tonight. But uh, I want you guys to check out "All the Way to Your Heart" from Dam Busters.
All right, that's damn busters with all the way to your heart. What do you think, Jim? Uh, that that ended too soon. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> well, I hear where it was going from there. Uh, I I liked it. Great groove. Um, it, you, I mean, you can tell these guys are pros, right? right. I mean, like, yeah. it just yeah. sounds great. Very well recorded. The vocals are absolutely phenomenal yeah love the bass sound uh i love that bass sound that just the fat bass yeah. laying it down mm. yeah. no frills rock and roll yeah, that's exactly it yeah a certain raw quality and and a little little bit of a bluesy influence in there mm-hmm. that i you know that i always love yeah what'd you think jerry i loved it yeah. very good and you can tell i looked at their bio but you know sometimes you need uh, you know, elders to just lay down this stuff. I was yeah. going to say something else, yeah. but, they, <laughs> but they, but they lay it out. You can tell when you hear it. Oh yeah. These oh, cats yeah. know what they're doing. They know what's up. Well, I, cer- stuff. I yeah. certainly hope they put out some more music. They have an EP and I don't know if it's available on Bandcamp. It's just this particular song right now yeah. on, their, One song. on their Facebook page. They do have an EP that they show. Uh, and I think it is called All the Way to Your Heart. I'll have to double check that. But I'll put the link down. And and again, we play a minute, minute and 45 of, of it. If you like it, Jim, go check it out and go buy it. Support those guys. I will. I, I, yeah. I was, uh, yeah, I was a little thrown off by the logo. I was expecting I know you were. something different. Yep. Uh, I saw that mod logo and I got all excited. <laughs> and then uh, and I thought, no, nah, not, not, not a mod band particularly. Not a mod but, band, uh, no. Just a good um, rock and roll band. Yes. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. check out the Damn Busters, guys. Uh, uh, Do yourself a favor and listen to some good music. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Jerry, what do you got for us this week? Uh, I got a band called the Empire Cats out of Dallas, Texas. And and folks out there in Conspiracy Land, Frank's brought this up before. Does the name of a band matter? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Now, these guys, (laughs) if you look up – oh, excuse me. I don't mean to – digress uh out of dallas texas they're on spotify itunes apple music google play instagram i'm gonna say it pound sign empire cats not hashtag it's right. pound sign empire cats on facebook a lot of their stuff's on facebook but if you have to spe- specify dallas texas because you'll get bands called the empire cats i mean excuse me the empire cast the empire the cat empire the empire rats the empire ants it's the Empire Cats <laughs> out of Dallas. I'm, I'm not kidding, guys. It's the Empire I Cats believe you. <laughs> out of Dallas, Texas. Guys, we've got Johnny Farrell on lead vox and guitar. Izzy Hernandez, lead guitar and vox, and they jam. Uh, Pete Wilkins, bass and vox. Taylor Medley on drums. And I have to do a little shout-out on this album of theirs, a debut, Empire Cats debut. Um, they do a live song. And uh, as soon as the song's over, they give credit to their old lead guitar player, so I have to do it. His name is Gary Ishii, right, and then Gary. Trini Mart- Martinez used to play the drums. So Trini. the current cast with this album, Johnny Farrell, Izzy Hernandez, Pete Wilkins, Taylor Medley. Uh, their own bio states, and I love this, a three-way between Aerosmith, Cheap Trick, and The Sweet. Guitar- guitar-driven hooks with a glam edge. All right. Oh, that catches me right off the bat. Uh they released this album 
a day before our last podcast, May 26, mm-hmm. 2019. And it's, uh, they, they have some tour dates last year. Uh, they're going to re up and do a tour back in Dallas on June 15th. So coming up here a couple days, but good, good old fashioned rock and roll, great rhythm, great guitar, great vocals. This guy, this guy's a wonderful singer. Um, um, Johnny Farrell, a uh, couple of songs when they slow it down a little, he, he totally comes off like a, the most rocking his stick song you can think of. <laughs> it does. It's little Dennis yeah. DeYoungy, little, little, you know, when they're, when sticks gets to it, but they're their own band. And, and I love them out of Dallas, Texas, the empire cats. Right. And of course the, their album cover, Johnny Farrell's wearing a flying V. Yep. So you, so, you know, I love it. <laughs> and, and the song, the song we're going to play at nighttime fuel, Frank. That's the one. Beautiful. Yeah. And the empire cats out of Dallas, Texas. All right, let's give the Empire Cats a listen. that there that is the empire mm-hmm. cats with nighttime fuel with a shout out to kiss with cold gin and a little, thank you uh, i thought that too i was gonna you know little homage <laughs> to uh joe the perry and yeah. uh brad whitford going on there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, you can tell these guys are truly influenced by some 70s rockers mm-hmm. yeah Good. love love that slide too oh yeah. i love that oh very nice like the empire the cats out of dallas texas sorry frank no, no, not at all. Their their lead singer's got a good voice. He's almost mm-hmm. almost too slick for that outfit, man. He's, you know, <laughs> he, he's, he's got a, you it's know, good stuff. Yes. I mean, that whole album just it's wonderful. Yeah. Comes in at thirty three minutes, folks. Ah, very good. Just saying. Yeah. Not not to change the subject. I was recently looking at uh, some of Hart's earlier albums from the seventies, and their their albums were forty forty five minutes long. What were they thinking? You know, madness. well, the, madness. the same thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I have a whole lot more respect of, of heart at, at this stage in my life, because, you know, back when they first hit, I think, what are we, 9, 10, 11? But yeah. it's good stuff. Right. Our heart's good stuff. Not to digress. But, well, yeah. Empire Cats. Good band. Yeah. Empire Cats. Good, good job, because that's uh, about 30 minutes is a good, good yeah. amount of time for an album like good that. Stuff. Yeah, and they you, do a, they do a live tune and it's so clean. Yeah, you 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 almost can't tell till at the end when people start clapping. All right. So let me uh, let me just say this: any any band that has an Izzy in it, it's got to be generally cool. generally you, good. Jim. I agree, hundred yeah. percent. I think if you flip the album over and you see like you look at the names of the band members, there's an Izzy on there. Buy it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Izzy Hernandez. It's, it's going to be good. Yep. Love you, Izzy. There's a cool factor there that cannot be denied. Absolutely, they, guys. Can it. I can I cut in on that? What the heck does Izzy stand for? What's the real name? I mean, I mean, I know Jim is James, and 
you know, Jerry is Gerald. What's Izzy from? I have no idea. Uh, it's, it's short for cooler than anybody else. Yeah. I'll go with that. Yeah. Okay. Cool guy in the band. Changing cool my name the... to Izzy, folks. Yep. Izzy Oberg. <laughs> <laughs> good. It's got a ring to it. Yeah, All right, Empire does. Cats. Check like, him hey, out. Easy, Oberg. Easy. <laughs> liked it. Liked it. Yes, you can, yes. And and could definitely hear a little sweet influence in there, which uh-huh. yes, sweet. So yeah. that's funny, Frank. I'm sorry to cut in. That's funny, Frank. I I thought early Kiss. Mm-hmm. Some yeah. of the stuff on the album, not yeah. specifically. Yeah, early Kiss. Yeah, good stuff. Good, good. Check them out. That's the Empire Cats. Out of Dallas, Texas. Out of Dallas, Texas. Not the Empire cast. Not the Empire rats. Not nope. the Empire ants. Not the cat empire. There's Tell really, you guys. A, there's, there's really an Empire ants. Yes, Jim. The name of a band matters, folks, in conspiracy land. Obviously. <laughs> there's the only the Empire way, ants. There's the cat empire. There's the only way I would check out the Empire ants is if they had an <laughs> Izzy in the band. Yeah. Oh, good point. Or if one of the ants was named Izzy, because it sounds like a Saturday morning cartoon to me. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right, moving on. Jim, what do you got for us this week? Well, I switched gears this week. What? Uh, Yeah, I I was feeling like I'm I'm kind of being pegged as the straight-up pop guy. With the girl <laughs> singers. Yeah, with the girl singers, even though <laughs> no, there hasn't been that many of them. Uh, oh, here we go. But we're, we're, <laughs> we're doing Judas Priest this week. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm. And uh, so I thought I'd get back to my heavy metal roots and did a little search on Bandcamp. And one of the first uh, bands I came across was a band called Riot City out of Calgary, Canada, which was a little surprising because I thought that was like cowboy territory up there, right? Isn't that where they do the Stampede, Calgary? So, yeah. or whatever. <laughs> and so, uh, so I was a little intrigued more, more by the idea that they were a metal band. But so uh, out of Calgary, founded in 2011, uh, Screaming Heavy Metal, Screaming. Inspired, inspired by Judas Priest. Hmm. Uh, leather spikes and studs, man. These guys are, <laughs> these guys are it. Just like us, folks. I, yeah, I, yeah, just like me in 1981 or something. Yeah. So, uh, I went on their Facebook page and I went to, went to the little about section, mm-hmm. and it says influences, pep and cheese. Pep and Anybody cheese. who's influenced by pepperoni and cheese, mm-hmm. man. I'm in on pizza. Yes. I prefer it with everything, but. Pep and cheese is good too. You never go wrong with pep and cheese. Yep. Nope. So, uh, <laughs> four four man band. Uh, right. Let me see here. So we have uh, Rolden Reimer. He's on guitars and backing vocals. Kale Savvy on vocals and guitars. Dustin Smith on the bass and backing vocals. And Chad Vallier on drums. Uh, first release was in 2014. It was a demo, Living Fast, which I believe is what the song we're going to be listening to tonight. Yes. Uh, full length is, is brand new. It's called Burn the Night, eight songs. Uh, also available on CD and LP, even a blue vinyl edition. Oh, oh shouldn't coming, have told Frank that. Yeah, <laughs> coming, out of, coming out of Germany. So it's mm. thir- yeah, 13 mm. euro, I think, for the CD and like 17 euro for the vinyl. Um, so I don't, I don't know what shipping charges are or that. I don't even, oh. it's like a uh, 0.9 or something Euro to the, to the dollar. It's not cheap. Though. It's not. We get ripped off. We get ripped off a little bit, but yep. not, not much, well, but they're from Canada. So how's uh, it going? Eh? We're going to uh-huh. charge you a little more and it's going to be in euros. Okay. <laughs> so, well, the, the point I'm making is, so if you go on their band camp, I think the album's like there. 12 bucks, but it's 12 bucks Canadian. Yeah. So they're actually getting it for now today under, under 12 bucks, right? right? Today I purchased um, mm-hmm. one of their tracks and uh, it said $1.25. And I said, okay, well, that's all right. I got a buck and a quarter. 94 happened, cents Frank? American. <laughs> yeah, 94 <laughs> cents American. So, hey, that's that's good. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I uh, I bought that track and uh, put in two bucks, and it came out to be like a buck fifty six. Cool. We're not here to talk about exchange no, rates. No. These guys, good point. 
It's a jam and band. One of the things I love, and, and I was thinking about this when I, when I said British Steel last time around two weeks ago, and I was thinking about British Steel, and I thought, you know, nobody, nobody plays metal in that vein anymore. No. And if you if you go on Bandcamp, you can search what what kind of metal you want, and it's, right. it's either death or thrash or doom, or speed metal or whatever. And even when you go on heavy metal, it's more like a new metal vibe. Right. Uh, these guys, um, they're vintage. They're they're vintage, man. Yes. And it's uh, if you if you loved that that pre sound of uh, late seventies, I would almost say early eighties priest. Uh, I would too. This, yep. this is right, right up your alley, man. Mm-hmm. So uh, and real, man, let's uh, real quickly, Jim. What is the name yeah. of the guitarist? The guitarist name. Uh, you recall, his name is Roldan Reimer. I think in Canadian that means Izzy. Probably means Izzy. Yeah, because not they, bad, not bad, Frank. Nope, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's give him a listen, <laughs> shall we? Not bad. <laughs> Here's Riot City, folks. That's Riot City with Living Fast. Oh, good you, stuff. You know what, Jim? You know who? What I hear besides Judas Priest, which definite there's an influence there, but later years of the band Riot, out of New York City. I was I was wondering about that name too. Yeah. Thunder Thundersteel and or Thunderstruck or whatever their their right. Th- Thundersteel is what their album was called. And um, all those albums after the original band had already you know pretty much oh, yeah. They, yeah. moved they, on they, but in, yeah. they have a they have a their singer is just awesome these mm-hmm. guys in riot city they, they got a good thing going and you have been redeemed my friend from that oh, thanks. pop music and, and, and may, I, which you and may I add folks great album cover what does that remind you of huh screaming for vengeance to me sure well, screaming for vengeance yeah, yeah perhaps you know this um they remind me a little more of like sort of painkiller era. Mm-hmm. A little faster when priests start getting a little speedy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A little more speed. Well, um, yeah, I'm thinking of uh, um, specifically their drummer kind of. Scott Travis. When Scott double, Travis kind of changed, changed up the sound of the band a little yeah. bit with that. But um, that's kind of what it re- reminded me of. You're, you're probably a little more priest savvy on their later stuff, but it reminded me kind of a little more painkiller. Mm-hmm. No, that was good. That was really good. Yeah. yeah. I good like stuff. That. And again, folks, you think there's no new bands out there? You think uh, there's no new music? <laughs> Riot City from Canada. Yeah. Ooh, and killing dude, it. Dude can hit those high notes, James. Yeah. Oh. And they and they Woo. just they haul. I mean, they, mm-hmm. yeah, they do. They're not joking Sorry, around. They just haul. Mm-hmm. I'd be curious to look them up on YouTube, see if there's any live stuff of theirs. If you can hit those high notes live. 
Yeah. Excellent. Excellent yes. stuff. Very good, Jim. That's a good pick as we move into our classic album also because it uh, you'll be able to check Riot City out on Bandcamp, and I'm sure there, there are other places as well, Jim. Uh, iTunes. All right. Um, gosh darn it, he gave me a little list. Hold on. Okay. But iTunes, probably the... Bandcamp, yep. Yeah, if you want to order it... Uh, you have to pay in band euro, camp, folks. <laughs> it's uh, No Remorse Records. Right. I like that. No Remorse Records out of Germany. How and, about uh, some colored vinyl, Riot City? Yeah, 100, 100 copies of blue. Oh, I'm in. And, and black, yeah. Oh, it's, no. I'm it's in. low. I told him, Jim. It's low. So <laughs> I want to be there one of go. those 100 people. You know I, I want to be one of those. Frank will have, like, copy number four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, hopefully hopefully, it's still available on colored vinyl. But. Yeah. Well, I'll check that out after this podcast. Riot it's going to sound just as good on black vinyl. Mm-hmm. It might, but I doubt it. <laughs> it's not going to look as cool on the turntable. I can't, I, I can't believe you tried to throw that in, Jim. We yeah. all know there's no way you can. No, you know it's on normal vinyl. Ah, I don't want it. I don't want it. Anybody <laughs> can have that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I want to be one of the hundred. That's of right. Yeah. Of course. Yep. Uh, Album number four. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, check out Riot City, folks. If you like uh, heavy metal and a little oh, speed stuff, to Jim. it. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like you say, when you're when you're searching on Bandcamp and it, you get your varieties of metal, um, there's two kinds of metal. There's one that you can tap your foot to, bang your head, and understand pretty much what the singer's singing. And I say singing. Or you can just hear a bunch of growling, screaming. Don't um, rush over, I yeah, you. I can't. I don't rush over, I you. Yeah, I just can't hell? give you that. Not not my <laughs> not my thing. And, and a lot of talented folks out there putting music out, and then they put they put a garbage can on top of it, you know. And, and well, I wasn't going to be that graphic, Frank. Well, but okay. that's what it sounds like. Yeah, don't want to hear it. I want I want to hear a singer sing, you know. And it, a lot of that's exactly. it's all right through, you know, processors and everything else. So I'll pass. Would you Would you listen to our classic album, Judas Priest, with somebody growling through the whole thing? No. Nah. No. I want to hear Rob. Yep. There you go. Oh, absolutely. Not, not Ripper either. For, you know, I'm kind of down on Ripper. Don't even get me going on him. He's a POS. So <laughs> I, I knew it. <laughs> oh, I'm not digging him Frank. at all. No. Oh, wow. I'm not oh. digging him at all. You know what? <laughs> yeah. You ungrateful son of a gun. So, anyways, that's just my opinion. What yeah. do I know? Mm-hmm. All right, guys, let's move on to our classic album, shall we? We're talking about Jim's pick, which is... My pick, yes. Judas Priest, British Steel. Oof, oof, oof. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. There's only one track mm-hmm. on that album that I don't like. What? Yep. Huh? Yep. yep. Just uh, one. Let me guess. Let me guess. You can Hang guess. On. I bet you all can guess, all two of you. I bet you everybody uh, listening uh, at home uh, who's ever listened so, to, Ju- uh, to Judas Priest Bridge still can guess. I'll go red, white, and blue. Well, that's not on the original. That's a whole other oh, story. Oh, I don't really? even know what you're talking about, red, white, and blue. That is on. <laughs> and I bought it, too, in U.S. coin, yeah, not Euro. That's a 2001 remix. You got a deal, then. That is Didn't not the original that. pressing, Let my friend. Let me cross that out. Let me cross that out. Yeah, that I is a track pick. that they that found. It was yeah. underneath some of Rob Halford's black panties that they found on the floor in the trash can. Easy, Frank. <laughs> so, Easy, Frank. Just saying. That wow. song is garbage. How else do you think he sings so high? You uh, got to wear panties. <laughs> I love Ralph Alford, man. He has got such a great voice. He had, does. Had, I should say. I don't know if he's still holding up live or not. It's a little spotty nowadays, but Jim, you know. Jim, what do you think Frank's uh, least favorite is on that on that album? Uh, I I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna really? go living after midnight. No, no, I no. Like living after I was gonna midnight. say breaking the law. Too commercial. No, no, like that song too. But the song I, that is my least favorite on that album is because it's a, it's a formula song that they did same kind of song they did on uh, Breaking the Law, or uh, uh, um, Killer Machine, uh, United, United. It's kind of like they try to do like an anthem type song, and, and I liked uh, it for that. I get a mark by it. Halford's anthem. Halford's voice cracks. He can't even sing the high note on that album. It's just that particular track. It's bad. It's bad all the way around. Um, and it's a, it's a remake. Wrong. 
Strong disagree. Uh, it's a remake <laughs> of a... <laughs> Thank you, Jim. No. Uh, on the album Killing Machine, wasn't it? They did a song almost exactly like it that ended their album, <laughs> that, that particular album. And um, I thought it's the same song. They just redid the lyrics, you know? Although so. when, I was, uh, when I was listening to the album, I, I always thought, you know, that big gang vocal... You know, where they're all mm-hmm. singing at the end. It sounds like a huge chorus in there and everything else. I always thought this this would have been like the perfect closeout yeah. to the album. I mean, it closes out side one, side right? Side one, but yeah. I was weak. Kind of bit, I, I like it. Weak sauce. Compared to rap, and, rapid since fire. We're doing weak and, sauce, and, since we're doing weak sauce, guys, may I add this? The song that you don't have to be old to be wise mm-hmm. sounds exactly like, She's got the looks to kill you don't have to be old to be wise. It's yeah. the same. Uh, 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 well, that's that's Sorry. Motley Crue. And that's Nikki Sips r- ricking people off. So you know. Was oh, that okay? So Priest was first. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Okay, yeah. so Nikki ripped that off because you don't have to be old to be wise. Play yeah. that, folks. Tell me that don't sound like looks to kill. Yeah. Just saying. Could be. And Never you can buy it with American money too. You can buy it with American money. Yep. It's okay. It's okay though. Yep. It is. That's Every, just... Everybody rips off everybody. So <laughs> Everybody nicks it. Robert Plant said that. Yeah. Everybody yeah. nicks it. I had everybody to look that does. up. Yeah. <laughs> it means everybody steals it. Everybody don't take, takes don't be, uh, uh, don't be blatant it about page. it. Oh, no. I'm not. A, no, it's, it's good stuff. Or give or give credit where credit is due. It's a great album. Are you kidding? First two, first two tracks? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Well, I like, I definitely like uh, The Rage, and I like Steeler. I like the way the album closes out. Um, I, I, I'd say, but that's my my only track that I, I, I would skip would be United. That's the only one. That, that, that whole album changed my uh, teenage musical outlook because Same I here. was searching for something, you know, that I really wanted to get into a type of music that, you know, I'd been, I'd been listening to black Sabbath and I've been listening to, you know, UFO and all those other bands and, and Zeppelin and all that stuff. These guys came out that for that British still album, it was recorded. It was, it was trebly. It, there was, it was, it was great. Plenty of sound to it. Yeah. And Rob mm-hmm. Halford just screamed on that thing. It was just, he, he growled and he screamed and he sang and, and every, every song just spoke to you. In 1981, you know. Um, for me, uh, best produced album up to that point. Yes. Well, their, yeah. their albums were always lacking. It's like they were looking for direction mm-hmm. because, uh, like I said, the Killing Machine album was uh, just a. It was good songs, but it was not sonically great at all. Same. Yeah. Same with. Um, uh, their albums before that, they were good. Re- so- they just didn't have the recording capabilities at that point. I loved, um, I loved the songs mm-hmm. on Sin After Sin. Yeah, but it's uh, dated the way it's, it's recorded. Well, it's, it's yeah, it's hard to listen to yeah. because I, I just the way it was engineered. Mm-hmm. Roger Glover produced that. Yep, right, and uh, just uh, not. No, nope. I no. was surprised. I like the songs on on Stained Glass better, too. The songs on yeah. Steam Clap, and they, that was a lot of those songs were were in their live show for you know many years, uh, but they changed directions with British Steel. And, uh, in a good way. Fantastic album! Yeah. I forgot how good it was, their, guys. Their yeah. breakout album here, mm-hmm. I would say. Yep. I would agree. Um, but it's not a commercial record. No. No. Well, we had, um, the only we really two, two, tracks the two tunes on the radio. radio, yeah, two tracks on the radio. Yeah, I wouldn't even say "Breaking the Law" is all that commercial. I don't I mean think living so. after living after midnight certainly is. Yeah, yeah. But "Breaking yeah. the Law" came when it came on the radio. You know, they they were almost forced to play it. It seemed like because they needed more to give the fans because they were getting yeah. so popular at that time. Mm-hmm. So I uh, I played that song recently with some friends. So I was going back and kind of relearning it, and. uh so I, I would throw the video on, on uh, YouTube. <laughs> play, no, don't play watch along the video, with it. And folks. I was all oh. like, "Oh, does KK little... Downing play a backwards flying V cardboard guitar on that thing?" <laughs> no, in the car. Uh, 
Uh, no. Are you and sure? Rob Halford has long reddish blonde hair. Yeah. The, so don't sure? want there, the there is. Folks. Yes. There's somebody in the video who does. It's not KK. <laughs> it's not KK. <laughs> no. I thought that was but in the back of the a, car. In the it's a little painful to watch. It's, yeah, don't it's watch the video, folks. I'm telling you. Silly. Don't do it. And, uh, don't do it. Looks like a, oh, it's like a monkey show. <laughs> looks yeah. Looks like they recorded it for like a, uh like a maybe, it was at a it was at a sewage plant. They're doing they're doing laps around the I don't know, treated water. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Spent about two hundred bucks video. on that video. <laughs> yeah. That much, Jim? Uh, two hundred two hundred quid as they say <laughs> across the pond. One one forty euro. <laughs> wonder if Don Kushner was involved in that. I don't know. I wouldn't doubt it. But uh, oh, good point, Frank. Very good yeah. point. Yeah, it was a little little tough to watch. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> Productions. Now, yeah, well, I, I I probably uh probably uh sixteen year old Jim thought it was pretty rad, but uh well, yeah. you yeah. know, now I see it and I was all like, Oh, that's that's but hard that's, to watch. That's the whole M T V generation. <laughs> can you think of any video of a hard rock heavy metal band? That you can look back and say, "Oh God, that that was cutting edge. That was cool." They're no, all they're lame. All, they're all, all pretty tough to watch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even like you know Van Halen, "Oh Pretty Women," where they did that. The oh, I never, that, I never got the. That was hard the, to watch. The chick at the end taking the wig yeah. off. And, uh, what the hell? Yeah, and and, and uh, Devo with Whip It. I love Devo, but I didn't like the video. Right. You know. Yeah. Good point. So, but yeah, the, we yeah, thought that was right, the coolest the cross-eyed stuff. Cross-eyed lady. The whip. The whip. Yep. They had those crossed eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> actually, uh, Jim and I went and saw this tour. We did. Long uh, Beach Sports Arena. Thinking amazing. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. And um, I still have the newspaper cutout, I believe, that says uh, Judas Priest and I think Savoy Brown. Um. Just, now, was it somebody else. Or maybe it was, was it? I don't know. <laughs> it, it, like it was like a bizarre. It was like a bizarre. It was. Uh, not bizarre, but it was, um, I, it was like John Sebastian or something. Some pre- yes, yes. Somebody yes. from the Love and Spoonful, yeah. I thought. <laughs> well, that's like all really, the Love and Spoonful. That's all I can really think true. of. Yeah, I remember he opened I'll, with Summer in the City. I'll find it. I'll find because I've got the, I've got the wow, newspaper cut out. And I even saved the uh, the review. Savoy Brown opened up the following year. Yeah, that for, was uh, in San Bernardino that I saw. Point of, him. Point of mm-hmm. entry. Yeah, there you go. And that was that was great. I loved yes. Savoy Brown. Yeah. They were mm-hmm. blast to watch. Right. And I don't remember which tour it was. It was was Saxon. I thought too. I saw them at some point also. And I was trying to go through. I just read the other day that uh, Crocus is going to come around and do a farewell tour, but it's not with uh, the original Before singer. They- before they croak? Before they croak, yeah. Sorry, folks. Crocus is a flower in Switzerland. Just saying. It's a flower. I, I, I saw them open up for Kiss. Um, put on a good show. Uh, Wasp, Crocus, and Kiss. So. Uh, interestingly, so going back maybe 1979, whatever, uh, maybe if you were really one of the cool kids, you knew Priest mm-hmm. prior prior to... Nobody I knew was really into him until uh, uh, Unleashed in the East. Right. Um, prior That's to that, I... I didn't know. But but I remember seeing a little bur- blurb on him in in Cream or some, I don't remember where. Mm-hmm. And there's a picture of Judas Priest, and uh, they're wearing roller skates. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Do you remember oh. this picture? And it said, <coughs> said something about... Uh, mm-hmm. You know, English English hard rock band Judas Priest trying out you know the latest right. fad in the U.S. and and you know and they're they're wearing like uh, black spandex and <laughs> and they're yes. and they're wearing roller skates and I thought yeah they I they were that. so close to disco with that photo mm-hmm. right spandex and, 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 and roller and probably, skates and I just me? had this you know I was just thinking back on that and imagining like uh, you know the promo guy from CBS. Oh, right. do this. This, this is so going to be great. Yeah. Hey, can this they is like really skates? in right now. <laughs> but you know what, Jim? You know what? There are no record companies doing that for bands anymore. So we don't get that crazy kind of stuff. We, there's nothing to look back now and say, oh, that was so cool in 2019. Yeah. You know? I'm sure I'm sure when they were in the midst of doing it, they were probably thinking, like, why are we doing this? Yeah. Why do we have roller skates on? Yeah. <laughs> and I again, I have that cut out also. I saved clippings. From throw Judas that Priest out, and from I Kiss. Throw that and out, Frank. I'd if I can find it, I'll post it on Facebook. Love to see it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that would be awesome. I've got an old Tower Records shopping bag full of cutout stuff. Jeez, Frank, yeah. how far back do you go? You got any Hobo Kelly? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, and you know what? Um, that uh, romper room broad never said my name either. And I tell you. <laughs> Mine either, and I hate her. <laughs> I bet she said Jim's name a hundred oh, times. At least. At nope. least. Because he was a good Not boy. that I ever heard. Uh, no Jim or James? I was a little, no, I was a little upset. Okay. Wow. Not yeah. going to lie. Hey, I want to yeah, know. It was disappointing. And this will kind of tell of our age group and our listeners. Does anybody remember uh, the Winky Dinks? Um, Winky Dink and you, Winky yes. Dink and me. I nope. had my uh, my father take me to TG and Y and buy me the Winky Dink television. Um, put it on the TV. Yes, you put a p- oh, piece of uh, plastic on a screen, and you help oh, Winky Dink cross a bridge I... or put a tire on or whatever. And oh my god! I got to watch I, that for the longest time until the. <laughs> One time I decided to draw on the TV without the Winky Dink screen, and uh, that ended my uh, my run of Winky Dink. Couldn't, yeah. couldn't sit down for a week, could you? Nah, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, that's a little off topic. Great no, picture. Frank, Frank and I both have history with TVs in his <laughs> house. <but laughs> uh oh. <laughs> let's hear, let's hear uh, more, guys. No, we don't need to go into that. Jim stuff. doesn't no. want anyway, to. That's enough. Jim's story to tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, not, my proud, not my proudest moment. Uh, that you, uh, <laughs> tell you when the mics are off. Anyways, uh, great album, and it set up, I think, a great career. He had a great run after that. They did, guys. Um, yes. I love. I loved revisiting it. Mm-hmm. I just, Same here. Uh, brought, didn't just bring back good memories. I mean, it was just like, this is a, a really good hard rocking album. It's not. A, it's not a commercial album at all. No. I mean, it's the songs are great though. Yep. Uh, the plane is fantastic. No, uh, forty-five minutes. They so, definitely hit their stride on British. Hit Steel. their stride, right? Yeah. Exactly. And the, and the outro on Steeler for about the last minute and 20, 10, 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah, it goes on. Just yeah. exchanging leads. Yeah. yeah. And just yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, screaming. Oh, just screaming. Oh, oh, the dual lead is heaven, yeah. pure heaven. Well, I know my son Dominic's going to go see him on the twenty-sixth of June. Um, out your he, way, right, Frank? Went ahead and got tickets. What's that? Is it out your way? I think yeah, it's out Ontario your way right now. at the uh, okay. Citizen Bank Arena. Oh. So, I might yeah. buy their new album after this, Jim. I honestly, I might buy their new album as soon as we... Uh, Firepower, uh, I have it. Go, it out, is... go out and pick up Riot City. Yes. <laughs> yeah, get the blue Fair enough. Vinyl. I'll do that first. Riot City first. <laughs> of course, I'm trying to figure out the exchange rate. It's it's less it's here. It's good. I'll, yeah, it's good. Yeah, good yeah you save, save, save a little bit. It'll look good. Oh, Riot City out of Calgary. I love it. <laughs> good stuff. Great album cover, too. All right. Well, next uh, episode. Your call, Frank. It's my call. Mm. Well, I, I, this might be a little bit of a, a disappointment because uh, I, I want to go a little more commercial, and, and this album shouldn't have been. But in 1982, this band came out. I think almost every track ended up being a, on the radio. But let's like go. Like Warner Four. It's not. It's not Huey Lewis Sports, is it? Uh, hold yeah! on a second. Or four. Hold on. Huey Lewis Four. F O R E. Dang it. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Okay. My new pick. Get him, Jim. I, no. 1982. <laughs> we're gonna go to Scorpions. Blackout. Oh, nice. Oh, yes. And wow. Uh, that album. I, I just listened to it today, and I'm like, oh, I, I like that song. Oh, I like that song. I like that song. Mm-hmm. And, and you talk about a band hitting their stride. The the Love Drive was an awesome album before that, uh, but probably Black... probably my favorite. So check out and be ready for Scorpions Blackout, guys. Yes, 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 and yes. Right. Yes, yes, and yes. Not a bad. I don't think there's a bad cut on the album, guys. No, if, I if remember there... wearing that album out. Yeah. yeah. If there is, I, I think the worst part about that album is the album cover. That's all. That. And I was never well, a big I, fan I, of that. I always thought it was Rudolph Schenker. No, it's and the actual artist. Me, a, Frank, yeah, you told yeah. me that, Frank. It was the actual artist. The artist that, that kind of tripped me out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still in. Yep. Oh, me same too. here. I mean, yeah. I I like the cover. Ah. Yeah, I, yeah. I like it, too. I'm it cool just kind of, it. to me, it gives you like a, like a crazy mental state thing. Yeah. Like you look at it and go, ooh, asylum. Yeah. So somebody's in an asylum somewhere. So. <laughs> 
It always bothered me with the forks in his eyes. That's why. I just like, eh. yeah. <laughs> but what I liked about it, Frank, is they showed him curved, but yeah. there was no blood dripping. No, no. So it's, it's just... like, they're close. You're right. But if there would have been blood dripping, that would have messed me up. Yeah. Just <laughs> keep yeah. your eye on the fork, folks. All right, well. guys. And real, real quickly, what did you think about uh, Dave Elfson um, giving us a little shout out there? Oh, wow, Loved Frank. it. Wow, that was, that was so awesome. Cool. And nice. And working on, working on a new Megadeth album in Nashville. Yeah. And he's the bass player for Megadeth. Yep. Woo-hoo-hoo. <laughs> Good stuff. We've got some my, other people uh, lined up Thank as we you, go. Yeah, yeah my oldest, uh, my oldest has just been kind of getting into Megadeth ah. lately, and so he, he was, he was kind of pumped when he saw that. He was like, "What? Yeah, very cool, <laughs> ah, Dave yeah. Ellison. That's awesome." <laughs> Wasn't pumped enough to leave a comment, but he was pumped. I like that. Okay. Well, <laughs> well one thing at a time. He commented Frank. me. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. That's good. Oh well. All right, guys. Well, if we don't have anything else, you know what to say, Jim. Shop is closed. The shop Keep is rocking, closed. folks.